Hey guys, Jim here from SavageShooters.com. Uh, today we are going to go over a basic setup for a brand new Savage rifle. Um, we're going to go from basically go over the things you need to do when you take from when you pick up the rifle at the dealer, take it out of the box, uh, mount your scope up, and get ready to go to the range to sight it in. Now, what we're going to be doing today is uh, starting off, we're going to be checking the scope base screws. The, the base is included with the rifle. Uh, typically from Savage since they don't provide open sights. Um, if you do have a model that comes with open sights and you have to mount, you know, supply your own bases, um, just the process is, is the same. You just don't have to loosen them first to check. Um, we're going to mount up the scope. We're going to check the, the torque on the action screws, check the torque on the base screws, properly torque the rings to the base, properly torque the caps on the rings, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is, as from the factory, the base will come installed on the rifle, so you're going to want to loosen the screws up from that. Actually, probably want to go ahead and completely remove it. I've already pre-loosened these screws. It's a little loose, but I'll go ahead and take it off just for purposes of this video. This is a 20 millimeter rail. Uh, supposedly, I guess uh, EGW is still supplying these. In my review of the rifle, I wasn't sure if it was an EGW or not. Uh, they've made some slight little changes to their design. Uh, so, not a big issue. It is a 20 minute tapered rail though. Uh, so first thing you're gonna do, when you pull it off, you're probably gonna find some moisture. It's basically built up oil uh, underneath your base. Go ahead and wipe that off. Uh, flip the base over here. Get the screws out, and you can just kind of see there's a little bit on there as well. That's just oil that seeps up in there uh, when they wipe the guns down at the factory, or if you've oiled the gun or the gun shop has oiled the gun before they put it on the rack, it'll just draw up in there. Uh, so go ahead and wipe that down before we get anywhere. Uh, this base is marked with 20 MOA on the back. Uh, and that will go on the rear to the rear of the receiver, so you get the taper going the right direction. Uh, the four screws on this one all appear to be the same length. On this particular model rifle, the 110 Tactical, these are uh, 840 screws. Typically, you have a 648. Uh, so make sure you know what screw size you're using, uh, so you don't over torque them. Uh, the 840 screws will take a bit more torque though it's, in my experience it's not really necessary. Get them back out of there. Now, if you'll notice I'm putting these in but I'm leaving them very loose. I'm just getting them started so that the base will move. I've got the back two in. What I want to do now is go to the very front screw and I'm going to torque that down all the way. I'm not going to torque it with the torque wrench yet. I'm just going to get it good and snug. I want to make sure that, number one, it tightens the base down completely tight. What we're checking for here is to make sure that that screw is not bottoming out on the threads of the barrel and preventing the base from being tight to the receiver. In this case, we are very good. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and loosen that back up again so where it's just barely attached. And I'm going to do the next screw. And we're going to do the same thing on that one. Uh, and in this instance, what we're going to check for, we're going to torque it down a little bit here, not, not going crazy on it, just getting it good and snug, but not hurting on it. What we want to check is make sure that our bolt is moving freely. Sometimes if you have a long screw in that second hole on the front, it'll go down and it'll contact the top of the bolt head and it'll create some drag there. So you just wanna make sure you have no uh, contact on these screws. So now that we know that those two screws are good, we don't have to worry about the length on the back. There's nothing back there for them to interfere with. We can tight, tighten them down uh, just snug. And then we'll come back with the torque wrench. Okay. 
Now on the torque wrench, uh, like I said, depending on the screw size, if you have the smaller 6x48 screws, I typically only like to do them to 20 inch pounds. On the 8x40s, uh, typically I'll do 25, uh, but I've got it set at 20 here. I, I still feel that's plenty. Uh, so that's just what I'm going to do here. You can hear it click, it's good. Click there. Click there. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 25. Right about there. And that way. And the thing you don't want to do here, these screws are very easy to strip out, especially if you have the 6x48s. Uh, and on a stainless receiver, you can strip those out very easily. Uh, so you don't want to over torque them. Like I said, 20 inch pounds to 25 inch pounds is plenty in most cases. Some guys like to lock tight them. I personally do not. I've never had a problem with them coming loose. But I know some people do like to do that. Uh, so I'll leave that to you. If you do use a lock tight, uh, use a lightweight, basically a purple, uh, I believe it is, Loctite that is the lightweight for small, specifically for small fasteners. Uh, if you use the red Loctite, you're going to have a heck of a time. You're probably going to strip out your head of your uh, Torx bit or Allen, uh, your Torx screw or Allen screw trying to get them screws out. So don't use too strong of a thread lock. Okay, next bit on the uh, process here is going to be to mount our rings. As I noted before, I have two different heights of rings. I'm going to go ahead and try to use these uh, low, the low wrist rings here. Hopefully they'll offer me enough clearance with this rail to clear the objective on the barrel uh, because I don't want to go to the higher height because it'll be way too high. Uh, so give me a minute. I will get these caps off of the rings and we'll get them mounted up and set the scope in and see where we're at. Okay, so now we are back and we have our rings separated here and oddly enough this just happens to be these are a cheaper set of rings they're uh, like the $20 vortex rings if I remember correctly um, but they're made in Asia and of course they took a metric size allen key so I had to break out the old L allen keys rather than the driver tips uh, now when you mount your bases the base half of your rings uh, really which side you put the tensioner on doesn't matter uh, it's a personal preference thing I like to have mine on the off side from the port so I'm going to put them back here on my side uh, I usually put the back one at the second uh, notch in a rail such as this and then the front one I'll just slap on up here just in front of the port and kind of see where we fall here uh, I'm gonna take our scope, see where we're gonna line here, see if our light height's gonna be okay. Uh, we have good clearance up here at the objective bell, so these rings will work just fine. Um, go ahead, we should have plenty of adjustment at there at that position for adjusting for our relief, so I'm gonna leave it set about right here. Actually, I think I'm gonna move that front one back just a touch. One, one slot on the rail. So it's right at the front edge of the port. Now mind you, these rings will probably get replaced down the road. I don't particularly like these, but they're what I had on hand for this. Uh, these take a big flathead screwdriver bit. Um, you want to use hollow ground bits. That one's a little wide for it. There we go. And these I'm just going to lightly torque right now. Uh, keep them in place. And we will properly torque. Eh, we'll go ahead and do it now. Uh, we're at 25 inch pounds. That's probably going to be sufficient for these. Typically I do them at 20. These are a little bigger fasteners, so I can get away with going with a little more. 
Uh, if it's like the Burris Signature Z rings, them screws tend to be a little, the heads on them tend to be a little soft, so I only do them at 20 inch pounds. Uh, but these are big enough, they can take the 25, no problem. Shouldn't affect stretching the threads. Um, next, now we'll go ahead and get our scope on. And we will get our caps on. Base, all right, now I'm just getting them down to where I feel them snug up, then I'll back them off about an eighth of a turn. I want to be able to move and rotate the scope to set the eye relief and level out the crosshair to the rifle. Uh, we're not really going to go into that in this video, but just so you know. All right, scope, and it's a little looser on it. Okay, so now we can basically take the rifle up. What we want to do, what I like to do, is I will set it to the maximum magnification. I, if it's a side focus model or has an adjustable objective, I will set the uh, focus as, to the shortest distance you can get. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to shoulder it. And I'm going to adjust it forward and back from a normal shooting position. To where I don't have any shadowing in my lens. Now with this being a 20 power scope it's going to be very difficult to do that because uh, just because of the high magnification you get a very short, typically a shorter eye relief and it's much more fickle. Uh, that's actually pretty good right there and honestly I very rarely use 20 power, off, more often than not, I'm, I'm at like 14 or 16 power when I'm shooting, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause here while I level this out. We're not going to cover that in this video, because uh, that's not the scope of this video. Uh, so I'll be right back with you shortly. Okay, so there we go with the scope. Uh, everything's ready to go there. Now all that we really have left to do at this point is to check the action screws torque. Uh, you can do this before or after you mount the scope. It's probably a little easier if you do it before you mount the scope, but you know, hindsight's always 20-20. Uh, let's see if this has an Allen wrench big enough here. Should have. Yes, okay. So first thing we want to do here, don't need the torque wrench yet. Uh, we're going to loosen them, kind of get a feel for how tight they were from the factory. And I'm just going to go ahead and loosen it a little bit. Uh, we'll do the back one here on the front side of the trigger guard. Holy smokes. Ugh. If you have an AccuFit stock, these can be done pretty dang tight. There we go. Whew. That was really hurt in there. Uh, on the Accu stocks, they have the aluminum chassis built in, and the way they're designed when you draw up these screws, it'll actually pull the action down into them sides of that chassis and spread them apart a little bit, which basically clamps the action to the stock, uh, which is why these are a little, uh, these are torqued tighter than what you would normally find on a uh, non ackee stock synthetic stock or a wood stock rifle. Okay, so both of these are uh, just loosened up now. What I wanna do, is go back and I want to torque this one down just get it good and tight and you know within reason I'm not going to kill myself trying to tighten this up but tighter than you'd probably uh, normally do it just by feel but I want to make sure that there's no contact with the bolt on that screw coming up through the bottom of the action uh, that might cause drag on the bolt or prevent it from opening uh, We've had guys where if that front screw is a little too long, especially guys if they're swapping out for a Boyd stock or other brand of aftermarket stock, uh, the factory screw from the, the original stock on their rifle is a little too long for that stock. They screw it all the way and torque it down. They go to close their bolt or you know put their bolt back in their rifle and it won't go in. Or if the rifle was closed, you know bolt was in and it was enclosed, they can't then get their bolt open. So you're just making sure you don't have any interference there with the end of the action screw coming up through the action. Uh, 
get it back over into here. Uh, with that done, the back screw will go ahead and snug back up a little bit. And now we'll go to the torque wrench. Front action screw um, is the one I usually do last. The rear one here on these AccuFit stocks I like to do right around 40 inch pounds. Uh, they say, I guess you can go up to, I've seen ratings for, you know, people suggest going up to even 60 inch pounds. I think it's a bit much. Uh, 40 inch pounds is more than plenty on the back one. In fact, we're already there. Loosen that up a little bit. Make sure I'm not tighter than I want to be. A lot of guys get really anal when it comes to these torque specifications. I'll be honest with you, I typically do it all by feel on the action screws. I just don't see the point in getting that worked up over it. Um, and in my experience, if you know if you vary it by you know five, ten inch pounds, it's not going to cause a major shift in accuracy. You might have to dial in one or two clicks any direction to get it back on zero when you go to the range but the fact is atmospheric condition variances can cause you to make that much of an adjustment as well from day to day so i don't worry about it uh i'm gonna drop back down to 30 inch pounds for the front we're gonna start there uh usually the front's where i will play a little bit with my torque variance uh just to kind of you know if, if you want to tune for your action that's where i recommend you do it at because that's where your recoil lug is. Uh, so we're basically good there. Um, that pretty much covers all the things there you need to worry about. The only other thing you might want to check would be your trigger pull. Um, make sure that you're not getting a slam fire with the factory adjustment on the trigger. Make sure you can work the bolt good and hard and you're not tripping anything especially if you got this longer bolt handle like this uh, you have a lot more mass there it jars the action more and it can cause the trigger to trip more easily uh, this trigger i believe i remember right set right around like 1.82 pounds somewhere right in there no problems with it uh, some of you guys if you have uh, target action with the target accu trigger that goes down a lot lower you can have problems with them tripping if you set them too low um, and so you might need to adjust the, the trigger tension up a little bit make a little heavier pull there's instructions in your owner's manual on how to do that and they give you the tool so i'm not going to cover it in this video uh, just check your manual so that pretty much covers everything i guess the only other thing you'd really want to check on these would be the free flow of the barrel. Uh, generally, I just eyeball it, but you can see here we're free floated all the way up through. No big deal. Uh, if you do have one that it, if it's touching or your stock's a little bit warped or it's a, the action's a little cocked in it, just loosen your action screws a little bit. What I recommend doing is I will stand the rifle up on end like this. And I will hold the barrel centered in the scope in the barrel channel while I tighten up the screws. Uh, that way it centers up, and then I'll check it again. And if it still if it still draws back over, then I know I've got a bedding issue, and I'm going to have to glass bed the stock. Um, okay, so that's pretty much going to wrap things up here. Uh, as I said, these were just some of the basic things that we uh, frequently see guys running into when they buy a new Savage rifle. And I wanted to cover those just to save them some headache and some hassle down the road. That's going to wrap it up. Hope you guys like this. Hope it helps you out. Have a good one.